And joining us now in studio, Ramin Jahanbeglu, Professor of Political Science at the University of Toronto, and we welcome you back here to TVO. Thank you. Let me just set this up a little bit. UNESCO, the United Nations organization, sponsors this World Philosophy Day every year. Philosophers from all around the world get together to, quote, discuss the principles and values on which world peace depends, democracy, human rights, justice, and equality. And this year, you would suggest in their uh, maybe attempt at a good joke, they're deciding to hold it in Tehran. Why don't you like the choice of venue? Well, for the good reason that you mentioned uh, human rights, uh, they call it the school of freedom. And I think that uh, with the violations of human rights that we've been seeing in Iran for the past 30 years, especially in the past uh, two, three years, and with the problems at the level of the free speech, freedom of thought, I don't think it would be a good idea to have this conference in Iran. Well, let's, let's state the obvious. No one thinks of Iran when they think of bastions of democracy around the world where free speech blooms and so on. Having said that, do you have specific reason to think that the philosophers who attend this conference will not be able to say and think what they want? Yes, very much so. I mean, uh, I, I do believe that uh, in this kind of conference, which is organized at the official level, because we can see that the, the chairman of this conference is n uh, nobody else but uh, Mr. Haddad Adel, whose uh, s uh, daughter is married to the son of the supreme leader, and he's the former uh, president of the Iranian parliament. I think that we will have, as we used to have it with the Stalinist regimes in Eastern Europe or at, uh, with Nazi regime, we will have philosophy at the official level. So there is no way people who uh, attend this conference will have a chance to go and speak with those professors who were purged or the students who are against the regime. You're a philosopher. You're also from Iran. Yeah. Are you going to go? No. <laughs> First of all, I'm not invited. Secondly, I cannot go. Uh, thirdly, why can't you go? Well, uh, be, uh, because I was put into in jail, as everybody knows, uh, as an Iranian Canadian, and uh, also while I was living in Iran, I could not teach already in, in the universities. I mean, I was uh, uh, purged already as a, as a secular uh, intellectual, and uh, I never had a chance to teach in an Iranian university. You know, my question was facetious, and I know you know that, but uh, I wanted to give people an opportunity to be reminded of the fact that you. Four years ago, spent uh, yes, 225 days in in, in an in Iranian Iran, jail. In jail, yeah, the same solitary jail, confinement. Yeah. In solitary, the same jail where that Canadian woman, Zara Kazemi, was Absolutely. killed. Absolutely. Uh, so you can't go back to Iran, period. Yes. Well, you could, but you'd be taking your life into your hands, right? Yeah, I mean, I will not certainly get to the conference. Maybe I will get uh, probably from the airport to the jail rather than going to the conference. Hmm. Uh, UNESCO, no doubt, has heard the protests of UN people like you. How have they responded? Oh, they were very embarrassed, especially because uh, the boycott was done at a very high level. With uh, got a lot of uh, well-known scholars uh, like Jürgen Habermas and many others, and some American philosophers and political scientists. And uh, they, well, they decided somehow to organize a meeting on the 18th and 19th of November in Paris somehow uh, to uh, somehow overshadow what's happening in Iran. Is this a, an alternative conference or competing conference? They don't name it that way, but it is actually. After what we've been doing and trying at the international level, I think it comes uh, as, as an alternative conference. Hmm. Have you been given a good explanation as to why the United Nations educational, scientific, and cultural organization would want to have this event in Tehran, Iran, to begin with? Well, the explanation they've been giving themselves is that Iran has a delegation at UNESCO, and this conference has been organized in Morocco, Turkey, Italy, and Russia, and Iran has been asked to have it in Tehran. And I think that uh, they really didn't uh, consider the, the, what's going on, the political reasons. And uh, they just said yes in the beginning. And when they saw that there is such a, uh, a critique and objection coming from the scholars all over the world, they decided to just uh, have the, the alternative uh, actually meeting in Paris. Let me read you an excerpt from the Guardian newspaper. This was earlier this month by an Iranian-Canadian doctoral student at Oxford named Banesh Haas. And here's what he had to say. Indeed, Iran is among the most exceptionally repressive and anti-intellectual states of our time. And this is precisely why UNESCO's World Philosophy Day can find no better venue. These boycotts, especially like uh, those like the current petition, which are initiated from outside the country, will only embolden the Islamic Republic's sense of being beyond the remit of international interest for all things non-nuclear related. It would be much easier 
to hold the event in Rome or London, but much less existential and hardly eventful. The pro-democratic green movement that swept the country after the rigged presidential elections of last summer has shown that Iran is on the cusp of socio-political upheaval and is therefore perfectly positioned to benefit from the critical insights for which philosophical exchange has the potential. What do you think of his argument? Well, five years ago, I would have said the same thing. Actually, I invited Michael Ignatieff, I invited Richard Rorty, many philosophers to come to Iran. But they were not invited uh, by the government, the Iranian government. They were invited by the NGOs. And they had a good chance to say what they thought about Iran. Actually, Michael Ignatieff, I remember, he, he did talk about Zara Kazemi's case. Mm -hmm. But this time, they are invited by, officially by the Iranian government, and they, are, they ha are supposed to go in a condition where you have so many professors of philosophy purged, so many students which find themselves in, 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 in prison. And uh, very recently, in the past few days, actually 12 subjects, university subjects, as philosophy, psychology, management, and many others have been restricted. We should not forget that 2 million out of 3.5 million of students at, in Iran, Iranian universities uh, are doing humanities. And humanities are now being attacked by the regime. But if the idea is to shine a light on all of these transgressions, there's a more likely, it's more likely the world's going to pay attention if this stuff takes place in Tehran as opposed to London or Paris. Isn't that fair to yes, say? It, this is one way of putting it. Actually, it was not the case in Eastern Europe or in China. I mean, uh, it's not necessarily that you, when you go there that you have a chance to say what you think. And uh, I don't think that they have the forums, the civic forums, to say what they think. I mean, that's the big problem. But by having it in Tehran, you do have this kind of marvelous opportunity to embarrass the regime, don't you? That you wouldn't have, again, if it were London or Paris. Yes, but uh, Steve, we have to be careful with that because we don't have any, uh, a program like the Agenda in Tehran. So uh, there are not You won't believe this. There actually is a program on Iranian television called the Agenda. I don't think it's like this one, but there is one. With no state picking as it is. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm not, I mean, what I'm saying is that there are two things. One, uh, the, the task of philosophy has always been a critical task of, of free debate, okay? So this is not going to be uh, actually what, uh, taken uh, actually uh, in the way we want to have it. Secondly, if, uh, those scholars who are going to attend the conference, they're going to somehow legitimize uh, uh, the Iranian regime, who, which morally and politically has been delegitimized in the past two years. Are there Iranian scholars, though, philosophy scholars, who think as you do and who will attend the conference and for whom you will miss this opportunity to be supportive of them? There are many scholars whom I respect whom inside Iran who might go to this conference, but I have to tell you that there has been a petition signed uh, uh, by many uh, Iranian philosophers who actually said that they are not going, and many inside uh, Iran who signed uh, under the false names because otherwise they will go to prison, that they said that they will not go to this conference. Let me try this. A fellow philosopher has said, if you want to fight injustice, you have to speak truth to power. That is impossible if you refuse to speak truth to power. What do you say yeah, to that? That was said by an American and uh, who has never been to Iran, and uh, because I, I read it, actually. It was published in the Wall Street Journal. And actually, uh, I, my point is that Iranian intellectuals and philosophers have been saying truth to power for the past 30 years. But most of them, they ended up either in the cemeteries or in jail. So what's a better way to affect change in Iran? Well, that's another question. I think that, uh, I, I, I do believe that at this level, I mean, intellectuals like it was the case with the apartheid regime, it was the case with Poland or Czechoslovakia, I think it's very important to understand that what is the task of philosophy, how we can do critical thinking, and how we can help the young Iranians inside the country. It's not by putting a, a political show and a, attending a political show that that's going to help. I think that the best way to help uh, a country like Iran is to be attentive to what its people and its civil society has to say. I mean, the Green Movement, for example. And I, I would say that philosophy today is part of the Iranian civil society rather than the Iranian regime. I guess the two extremes here are complete international boycott, have nothing to do with the country whatsoever, or some kind of, for lack of a better expression, constructive engagement. Yeah. It looks like you're advocating the former when obviously many people around the world prefer the latter. 
I'm also which for constrict I'm also for constructive engagement, but what you call constructive engagement has to have a level of moral responsibility and I would say also political dissent and political consciousness. How does the diaspora then if it you know, if, if you don't want the diaspora attending events like this, what would you prefer it do? Uh, it's not a question of diaspora. I mean, it's, it's a question of, I would say, philosophy itself, its task, and also philosophers. I would say that, you know, two months ago, three months ago, uh, the, the Iranian regime invited uh, elements uh, of business elements or uh, civil elements from the diaspora, Iranian diaspora around the world. And actually, they went there, some of them went there, uh, and they actually became instruments of the Iranian regime without wanting it to be, become the instruments. Now, I think that the same kind of show will be going on at the level of this philosophy congress, because it's out of question that a country which at the same time is putting restrictions on humanities and purging professors would like to defend philosophy and at the same time having a philosophy conference. I don't know if you saw the news the other day. They, they are uh, they're cutting the hands off of thieves again in Iran, right? You saw yeah, this. Yes. Um, you know, how does the world get that to stop? Well, I do believe that uh, Iranians do need uh, the world to have uh, the solidarity, I would say, of the, uh, of the world uh, uh, to, uh, to fight for against the violation of human rights in Iran, at the same level as the nuclear issue. I mean, everybody, I mean, even in your uh, program, they talk most of the time about the nuclear issue mm -hmm. because this is num no, number one, actually, issue number one. But I think issue number one in Iran is actually a violation of human rights. Would you like to see an uptick in international sanctions? Yes, it depends on the sanctions. I, be, I do believe that the sanctions which attack Iranian people and put uh, a lot of suffering on them, I will not accept them easily because, well, this is touching people who are already suffering from uh, many menaces and dangers of this regime. But I would say that some kind of uh, sanctions like we used to have them for the apartheid regime in South Africa are very welcome. No one ever talked about uh, invading South Africa or launching bombs on South Africa, but they do talk about that for Iran. Yes. Do you think that's a viable option? I do, I'm, I'm against any kind of attack against Iran uh, for many reasons. First of all, because um, I don't want Iran to be attacked. Secondly, because I think that uh, this is going to be a start for a huge mess and chaos in the Middle East, especially because Iran is not going to retaliate itself, but its proxies, meaning the Hezbollah and the Hamas, are going to retaliate against many countries and many foreign interests in the Middle East. So it starts something bigger rather than ends anything. Absolutely. Professor Jean Beglu, it's always good of you to visit us at TVO. Thanks again. Thank you very much.